All right, guys, welcome back to our final recording, at least for this um, particular series. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next after this, but this one should be relatively quick, <laughs> considering. Um, I'm just going to show you guys how I essentially just cleaned up my code a little bit so the player script isn't so over-encumbered. I think at the end of... I think the last video, our code was at around like 500 or so lines of code, just on the player script alone. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how I broke that down into smaller bits. That way the code is a little bit more manageable and um, not, everything's just not so cluttered. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to structure this. I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna go back and forth and see between the old code and the new code, what I added, what I took away, and how I got certain things to continue to work after the fact. So, um, I apologize in advance. Um, I was meaning to record like two or three days ago, but it's just been super windy. So if you hear uh, banging in the background, that's all it is, it's just the wind. Uh, we have been having really bad weather here, but anyway. Another point. Okay, so I guess I'll start at the top. So one thing that I did was that I put all the animation code, or at least most of the animation code, inside the animated sprite 2D's node. So all I did was just highlight that and then added a script in this, which was completely empty. And then I put in a bunch of the old code that we had. Now, it didn't work, obviously, once I copied all the code from the player script to the to the new node. Um, let me see here, exactly. Oh, I see, I see, I already, I was already fiddling around with that. Well, I guess that doesn't really matter. Um, but anyway, um, because I took the code from the original script and put it in a brand new script, um, things didn't quite work out, um, or things weren't like quite plug and play, so I had to make a couple of adjustments here and there. So I, all I did was I just got a couple of the nodes that I was going to need that was in this hierarchy, or this tree, I guess you would call it. Um, so I just got, got the parent, which is the very first thing, obviously, and then um, from there I would just ask from the parent to get certain nodes that I would have needed to change, such as like the standing collision, the jump collision, the raycast 2D, which is one and two, which is what these check landings are to make sure that um, it knows when we're about to land, and then the morph ball collision. Um, I took and got a bunch of the variables as well from the player script, and I just threw them in here. And then after that, I don't know if I had any, no, I didn't have any parameters. So I rewrote, I had to rewrite some of this code um, again for the new script, or I just essentially just copied and pasted what I had from the player script. Did I not grab the same things? No, okay, I, I, have, I just want to have a feeling. Maybe some player movement. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, I pretty much made a double function. Um, from what I understand, you're not really supposed to do that. It's a, a dry principle. I actually put it here. And all that means is don't repeat yourself, but I wound up repeating myself, so <laughs> take with that what you will. Um, this was just a super easy and dirty way just to get the stuff to work again. That way, when I pressed left and pressed right, the current um, directions and stuff would still would still interact with the, the player's animation that I had already created, um, such as changing its direction and its running, um, if it was running left or running right. I tried putting those those variables inside, <clears throat> excuse me, inside here, like, you know, uh, what was, what did I say here? Like, running left, but it doesn't, it didn't seem to work properly for whatever reason, so I just rewrote, I just rewrote the, uh, lines of code that I had already written for that. Here, same thing, just made sure that um, all this stuff was 
essentially copacetic. I don't think um, any of this stuff, this is no longer needed as I've adjusted the sprite to fit perfect. Oh, okay, yeah, I just copied that from the other stuff. But yeah, I pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, all this stuff is 100% identical to the um, other animations that we did, or the other code that we had written inside the player script. I think this is the only one that I added, which was the uh, check current aim. Um, I think that was also a double check current aim, yeah. So all I did was just pretty much copy and paste this into there because I needed this stuff for, um, if I remember correctly, for the aiming of the bullets. But this also needed it for the aiming of the sprite to make sure the sprite changed properly. So yeah, um, all I did was, like I said, just shoved all that code right in here. Most of it um, worked. If you're confused about any of this stuff, don't worry. I have the complete project in the description. So. Um, if you want, you can just dig around there if there's anything that's um, confusing or you don't understand. All right, so let's go all the way down to the health data. Let's close that down. Um, same thing as I did as I did before. I just took all the the stuff from the health and I just threw it inside here. Um, obviously, I got rid of the bin hit. I actually readjusted the knockback code just a little bit. Get damage. Yeah, so all I did was the same thing. I just took all that code, copied it, and pasted it. Um, apparently, I added an actual timer function in here. Yeah, right here. And um, when this was called, I made sure that the timer resetter got called as well. So whenever the player got hit, um, it would all it would trigger this. Um, it would trigger the timer, that way um, it would reset. I had to readjust the enemies hitting or attacking, so I'm gonna add that right now. Uh, maybe boss. So as you'll see here, um, well, better yet first, let me go into the uh, player here. I needed to adjust my health. That was called health node. So, <clears throat> Essentially what I did is I just removed that all, all the health data or the, all the health code that I had ri originally written, which is now shoved in here. So yeah, where all the stuff was uh, currently or was before, all I did was remove it and then add a new function in its place, which was call health node. That obviously needed an amount. And then all I said was get the health data node. Wait, give me a second here, let me go here. Get the health data node get the damage function that we had created in there before and then um, get the amount. So all that's saying is um, when we get hit again, we get the damage, get the amount, and then do all the old code that we had did previously. And then with the boss or enemy, didn't really matter, um, I had to adjust this from, I'm gonna go right here. Do I have the boss in here right now? Yes, I do. Look at your code here. And what was that called? This was called attacking player. So let's go in here, attacking player. And all I did was instead of get damage, as we had down here, whoops. Um, all I did was call the health node and then the power of whatever the, the boss was. And then the same thing, just the a knockback here. Now, like I said before, I had the knockback change just a little bit. For the player, let's go find what I need because I don't remember. Okay, um, all I did was um, I got rid of the bin hit function or the bin hit um, boolean, and I just threw it in the uh, movement dot x um, condition here. So now when you get hit. Um, both the Y and the X movement both trigger at the same time. I don't know why I, I didn't, didn't do that in the, the first place, but um, whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then as you'll see here, that the the enemies still do damage to you. I hope this isn't too much, but yeah. You see here, I still get hit, and there's still knockback. Come on, hit me again. There you go. Hit me again. Again! 
<laughs> so yeah, so that's all that. And then the same thing happened with the weapon data. Now this one here was a pain in the butt. Big fat pain in the booty hole. So I just took the, the fire weapon and fire missile from the player script. And then again, just added a node here, which by the way, I just did, all I did was add a, an actual node like this, create, and then I just called it whatever, whoops, let's make sure that uh, cat blocks are not on, whatever, and then I just added a script to it. So, let me just delete this, and that key creates almost like a component that way you can kind of just plug and play your, your crap. But anyway, so because I had taken um, all that code and threw it into a script that didn't have all these variables, um, I just had to put all the variables that were missing inside the parameters. That way, whenever this was called from the player script, which I believe, fire, that's not here. Oh, here we are. When, when the player would call the fire method as well as the animation method, as you can see here, um, we can just throw in all the parameters from the player script. That way we didn't have to rewrite them like I did previously. Again, this one actually seemed to work. I don't know what the, the deal was with the uh, the animation one. I'll, I probably should have spent more time on that, but anyway. Um, all, I, all I did was um, I got the node uh, weapon data and then I called either fire missile or fire weapon depending on what I currently was holding. So in this particular case, um, let me see here, weapon data, okay, yeah, so one, one would be if I was holding the uh, missile button and the other one would be if I wasn't holding the missile button. That way it would either load in the bullets or it would load in the missiles. And then for that, I had to remove get parent and just hit add to uh, add child. And this would actually add it to the scene instead of parenting it to the player because, um, because it was no longer attached to the player script. Uh, it, would, didn't, it didn't need to be parent to the world anymore. So this would just add it to the world and it wouldn't be parent to the player. That way, if the player jumped, the bullet wouldn't follow them. Or if the, the player was falling downwards, the bullet wouldn't follow them. Um, and then after that, I just essentially uh, got the parent and then looked for the bullet marker. So essentially all I said is uh, weapon data, get the parent, and then give me the bullet marker. That way it would fire out of the gun um, or find this marker 2D that we had here and continue to fire it from there and the same thing was done for the missiles this is the missiles yeah yeah this is the missiles same exact thing um, but just for the missiles and then I have here the uh, morph ball I don't think I showed you how to do this but um, if I did or didn't this is how it was done super easy um, I also added a new marker for the get bomb. I made sure it was high enough that way um, when it touched the ground or it, when we f we laid the bomb it wasn't touching the ground that way when it automatically deleted itself. I mean I could have put a condition to uh, check if it was on the ground or not but I didn't want to bother with that. So yeah um, and let's see here I know I added a bunch more shite or well, maybe I didn't Again, don't <laughs> don't remember. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm just going to do this and do this. Add it. Add it. Add it. Okay, the save function was the next thing I did. Okay. So, like I said before, um, I want to make sure that the player can call the save function um, at pretty much any time, uh, but limit it to only the save station. So what I did was I created a global, a global variable, project settings, auto load, and then I just called the save function. I'm gonna just pop that up here. Save function, 
again all I did was um, copy all that old code and throw it in here now again I needed to make a couple of changes because certain things weren't the same anymore so for example file name I just called it to parent save instead of what was it before uh, yes I did <laughs> all right well there's that Okay, I don't remember what this freaking thing was called, but all I did was I just created a, a variable here called get gets uh, not get called parent saved, and then I essentially changed that to the get parent. Oh, that's what it was. Get parent get scene file path. That way, um, this little thing here would change to that. Um, the reason why I, I changed it is because this is now a global script, so it's no longer in the scene. Um, that's why I had to do it that way. Um, doing it this way, it's getting it's getting this scene and it's throwing it into that variable, and then it's allowing it to be saved within this data structure here. Um, then I changed the player's current position dot post to X, and if I'm not mistaken, yes, it's, this is also up here, and I had the player position um, change to that as well that way the position is equal and if I'm not mistaken I believe yeah I believe I changed this as well so it's no longer getting it from the I believe I put it in the players inventory if I'm not mistaken in the videos but I now added it to the global position that way um, everything is coherent and then the same thing with this I just left these alone all this stuff didn't have to be changed from what I understand, yeah. And then the load, I changed a couple of things as well. Um, I changed these all to the local variable. Um, again, player's current position. Save both the X and the Y position. And then I don't think I need to change this to anything, right? Nope, no, this doesn't look like it. Now I could have sworn I did something else. Was it in portal? Oh yeah, portal. Um, again, I changed this uh, to the save function, uh, the save function global script instead of, I believe, the player's inventory again. And do, 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 do. Like I said, and I did the same thing with the enemy script. Give me a second here. I don't see the enemy anywhere. Wall hugger. So yeah, wall hugger. Same thing. Uh, all I did was change this to the call health node instead of the get damage, and then it just does its own thing. I don't remember me changing anything else, if I'm not mistaken. If I do remember, I will <laughs> I will add on or append this video. Map exit. Yeah, I think I think we Gucci. <laughs> I think we're good. So yeah. Um, that was just what some of the things I did to essentially minimize this code. So it's no longer 500. It's now like two. Is it 220? 233. 233 lines of code versus the 500 or 600 lines of code. So yeah, I can probably break this down even further if I really wanted to. But I thought this was perfectly fine. Um, and again, um, all this stuff continues to work as it did previously. Nothing has changed. Or I haven't lost any of the functionality that I had previously. As you can see, my missiles are still going right there. It's still registering my uh, position. I'm still getting my uh, my missiles. I'm still able to kill enemies. I'm still able to go through doors, and I'm still able to trigger the boss. So yeah, um, like I said, this should be the end of this little tutorial series. I appreciate you guys watching so much, but I am ready to do other projects. I don't know if I want to do a devlog or, well, or start a devlog on a game I've been working on for about a year and a half, I think now, or if I want to do another tutorial series, because I have, been working on this whoops i don't want to do this is this so i might i don't know if i want to do this but we'll see we'll see what i decide give me a second while this thing loads up 
So yeah, this is something else I was working on as well. A little 2.5 game. But yeah, not sure. We'll see. We will see. Like I said, um, thank you guys for watching. Um, if there is anything that you have questions on, um, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I do read them daily. I probably won't get back to you immediately, but I will eventually get back to you at some point in the day. No, no later than one day. So, yeah. Until next time, my children. Uh, farewell!